Well, welcome to our devotional for, for this week. Um, it's been uh, good doing these over the, the past year. I know we're, we're meeting together now on, on Sundays and hopefully um, as uh, yeah, things begin to open up more that more people will be able to, to join us on, on Sundays and eventually we'll get back to a normal service. Um, one of the things with, with meeting again and, and praising God together, um, even though it's a, a little different, it's, it's good to have that um, sort of communal feel to, to worship. Um, as I say, we're not singing quite together, but uh, watching the the song um, and just seeing other people in the room and um, you know seeing a few people tapping their feet and you just kind of have have that feeling of, of communal worship. So it's uh, it's been really encouraging. One of the songs that struck me uh, as, uh, the other week when we were meeting together was uh, Ten Thousand Reasons" by Matt Redman. Um, it's an exhortation to to praise God and it's all quite a few people that were. Uh, enjoying listening and uh, maybe humming along as I was uh, to the music. Um, that's obviously a, a song that's, uh, that's based on, on scripture, so I, over the last couple of weeks I've been looking into it and, uh, and studying and meditating on, on the psalm that I was based on, which is Psalm 103. And also um, looking at a, a, a psalm, a paraphrase of the psalm by Henry Light, um, which is, is very well known, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Um, Light at the time broke the mould, very much the mould of, uh, of the style of, of psalm, or hymn writing based on psalms, and um, were quite a loose paraphrase. Uh, obviously Matt Redman and the modern approach is, is more of a picking up the themes of the, the psalm rather than sort of going through verse by verse and uh, interpreting it. Uh, so it's a different style and different way of interpreting the psalm, but both I think together uh, help us to, to praise God and also as we, we meditate on, on the words of the, the songs and and the psalm help us to understand more deeply what uh, God is telling us. Uh, so I'm going to briefly um, take a look at a few points from, from the psalm, uh, but first I've asked Steve to read the psalm for us. Psalm 103 Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy to, towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him, for he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like the grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes, for the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those who remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, O you his host, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Thanks for that, Steve. So I just have um, four brief points um, to, to bring out, uh, you know, looking at uh, that psalm. And the first one is really looking at what uh, what David is is telling, first of all, himself and then us to do. And that's, uh, I guess, essentially to to talk to ourselves. Um, you know, his, his exhortation is to his soul, um, to, to himself, to, to praise God. Um, I'm not sure if that's something that uh, you ever do yourself. Um, um, you know, we often associate that with uh, with maybe with madness, but um, it is something that you know we 
we should do and we should encourage ourselves you know we um, have that sort of conversation with ourselves in our head to uh, to encourage ourselves to, to praise God as we meditate on the scriptures to um, think through things it's uh, it's helpful to to do that and here David is first of all um, it's uh, you know written by him to himself um, telling himself to, to praise God and by inference that's also because it's a communal psalm uh, for communal worship that's an exaltation for all of us to, to worship God and praise God together but then also individually each of us that we need to, to tell ourselves and to to praise uh, have praise of, of God in our hearts and we don't know the circumstances that uh, David was in uh, when he when he wrote this but uh, it really applies for whatever circumstances you know whether we're in difficult times then it's good to remind ourselves that you know we need to think about what God has done and, and praise him but also in the good times that uh, you know thank God for for everything he's done for us and not forget him and um, for all those things first main point that uh, I really want to bring out is is the based on the the title of Matt Redmond's song 10,000 reasons comes from the second verse for all your goodness I will keep on singing 10,000 reasons for my heart to find the psalm you know, picks this up in in verse 2 forget not all his benefits not all his benefits we have so much to thank God for and it's uh, almost too much to count uh, often we will say an exaggeration by saying that we like something a million times more than something else um, but here I don't think uh, this is hyperbole this is almost the opposite um, you know is it only 10,000 uh, this is 10,000 because it's just a, a big number that uh, is is too much and the psalm itself is just packed with so many reasons you know, every verse is is full of things that we need to praise God for and thank God for the benefits that uh, he gives us just take verses three and four for example um, I like the way that uh, light paraphrases this in just one line in in his hymn ransomed healed restored forgiven just think about how many hours we could spend opening up those subjects each one of them um, you know we could have devotionals for the whole week uh, just just based on that there's just so much depth there but just in one line that's uh, you know 10,000 reasons and more it just in in that little bit um, and it's not just the the breadth of the uh, the the things that God has done for us but also his character um, later in the psalm David describes his love as high as the heavens that is our sins have been removed for as far as the east is from the west and that his love is with us from everlasting to everlasting so it's not just that there's 10,000 reasons of different reasons but each of those reasons is such a there's such a breadth and, and depth to them but also I mean it's not just that we should be in general um, you know praising God for for these benefits but as we've seen in the psalm he goes through and lists um, specific benefits uh, just because there's more reasons to count isn't doesn't mean we shouldn't count them and be specific about them so much looking at what God has done for us and who God is David in the psalm looks back to to Sinai and God's covenant uh, with Israel and uh, he quotes Psalm uh, Exodus chapter 34 that God is compassionate and gracious slow to anger abounding in love so he's drawing on scripture and drawing on the teaching that he's received to to look at um, what God has done for us now this is um, you know David looking back at the history and obviously you know now we as um, as, as Christians uh, in the New Testament era uh, we can look back to see how Christ has accomplished those things that David was was looking at um, we know the incredible depths that God has gone to to bring about that salvation that uh, uh, that David was rejoicing about so Paul brings that out in, in Romans uh, chapter 5 God demonstrates his love for us in this whilst we were still sinners Christ died for us so um, as the psalm closes um, it uh, closes with an exaltation uh, of all creation not so not just our souls but um, you know everything uh, heaven and um, created things uh, the mountains the trees to lift out uh, lift up their praises to God angels and the, the heavenly hosts um, what, what I, it's interesting to to see in uh, the 10,000 reasons song that Matt Redman links that to the fleeting fleetingness of life that we see in verse 16 that our, you know, our days are, are, are like grass they um, they're fading so fast but 
Um, as he also said that you know God's love is with us from everlasting to everlasting. That promise to us is is going forward. So um, you know our lives may be may be brief and, and fleeting, but you know uh, God's love is there, and our souls will um, join Him in heaven, and we'll have a resurrection body that we can praise God with uh, for forevermore, as as Matt Redman says, for ten thousand years and evermore. Um, but you know we don't need to wait for for that long so we can start praising God we can start praising him now and we're going to do that by um, listening to the uh, and maybe humming along to uh, the the Henry Light hymn uh, praise my soul the king of heaven <laughs> 